Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Well, we got our reveal of the RTX 3000 series GPUs from NVIDIA. Now, today I'm not going to go into all of the details of the specifications, as most of you should know the details at this point. I will, however, in the background, put up all of the specifications and all the different slides that were available from yesterday's show. Now, today I really want to give you guys my opinion on everything that we saw with NVIDIA's 3000 reveal. Now, I think overall that it was a pretty good showing now the 3090 is a monster GPU now what I found really strange about the unveiling of this card is that it's basically a Titan card aimed at gamers now traditionally Nvidia's Titan cards are not aimed at gamers yes these cards can play games but they're usually for the pro consumer for content creators yet this time around they are aiming the 3090 at gamers now I found that a little bit strange and the price tag is fifteen hundred dollars now some people are excited at the price tag saying well a Titan usually retails for a lot more than fifteen hundred dollars yes it does but it's not usually aimed at the gamers so I found this a little bit odd now the 3080 is a well balanced GPU now I think this is the best GPU out of the lot now the performance gains that you get over the 2080 Ti with the 3080 is phenomenal now this GPU is going to make its way into my system now at $699 I think it's a really good value a much better value than what we saw from the 2080 Ti when it launched right now in the used market we're seeing a flood of 2080 eyes enter and they're going for half of the price that they were listed just a few days ago now the 2080 ti i never thought it was a good value that's why i didn't get that gpu i ended up getting a 2070 super and i thought it was a really good gpu now i could play games at 4k resolution i could play a lot of games at 1440p with dlss and some other features turned on overall i thought it was a good gpu now i knew that i was gonna wait until the next line of gpus came from amd and the video before i really did my major upgrade and it looks like I was right now the 3070 is also going to be launching and this again is another GPU now this is priced at $500 this is giving you performance of around a 2080 Ti now they say it's a little bit better than a 2080 Ti but some of these charts I don't know if I fully trust them nonetheless on paper it's supposed to be greater than a 2080 Ti now if you were paying attention the video was very aggressive with all of their marketing materials now they even took some shots at the Xbox now they said that if they were calculating ray tracing the same way that Microsoft was calculating ray tracings for the Series X that they would have around one and a half times more performance than that GPU now overall I think that's pretty good for the Xbox Series X so it's looking like the ray tracing performance will be around 2080 Ti performance and I think that's really good for a console that's gonna cost around $500 now I don't think anybody expected the Xbox Series X to have better ray tracing capability than the 3000 line of GPUs coming from NVIDIA. Now I do expect AMD's ray tracing to be better than Turing as it is a later generation card. It's coming after the first generation of RTX cards came out so I'm sure AMD saw some of the things that NVIDIA did wrong and of course they're gonna improve upon it. Now overall I'm really excited for the RDNA 2 cards. Now can AMD compete with these GPUs from NVIDIA? Now I think NVIDIA is actually worried. Now some of you guys are probably caught up in the hoopla from yesterday's announcement. Now first of all the 3090 they did say it is capable of 8k with 60 frames per second but that is with DLSS turned on now if you turn off DLSS apparently you only get 15 frames per second when running 8k now in my opinion I really don't think that the 3090 is a true 8k card now we're gonna have to wait till some reviewers get this in their hands and they do some tests but I have a funny feeling that when they do benchmarks we're gonna see that this truly isn't an 8k card the 3090 is using 24 gigabytes of GDDR six times memory and I gotta say this is kind of overkill I don't see any gaming situation where you're gonna end up using all of those 24 gigabytes that's available now that's just my opinion I really think that the 3090 is just created so that they have bragging rights that they have the world's most powerful gaming GPU when in reality it's a Titan card and that tells me that Nvidia is worried about AMD and RDNA 2 Nvidia's Ampere cards are using the 8 nanometer node from Samsung and AMD's second generation RDNA 2 cards are using the 7 nanometer process from TSMC. Now the 7 nanometer process from TSMC I already know is better than what is offered from
from Samsung, I can see that from the clocks. Now the clock speeds are 1.7 gigahertz roughly on the RTX 3000 cards, whereas we know AMD, they're going to go higher than that. Now some of you may say, well we don't have any metrics on RDNA 2, how it's gonna perform on the PC. Well we could take a look at the PlayStation 5. It has a very high clock of 2.23 gigahertz, and even if it's a boost speed, it is capable of hitting those speeds, which tells me that the seven nanometer node is very efficient. Now I would expect the PC counterparts of those GPUs to perform even better, and of course, be much more stable at these higher speeds. So I'm expecting these RDNA 2 cards to clock higher than these 3000 series GPUs. Another way we can see that the RDNA 2 GPUs for PC are gonna be very powerful is looking at the Xbox Series X. Now this console is packing 12 teraflops of performance, and this is in an APU. Now it's a custom APU, but nonetheless, it pretty much is an APU, and this is incredible performance. Now imagine how much better Big Navi will actually be. I really do believe that AMD is gonna shock the world here. I think that the RDNA 2 cards will beat the RTX 380. I'm not too sure about the 3090, and that's pretty much a pro-consumer card, so only 1% of the consumers are really gonna get that card, so I don't think it really matters if they beat a 3090. The 3080, I do believe they have to beat it, or at least be on the same level with a much lower price point. Now, the video kind of made a shocking announcement at yesterday's event. They announced that their RTX 3000 GPUs will be able to stream game assets directly from the SSD to the GPU VRAM without the CPU. Now, this is using Microsoft's direct storage, and that is a part of the Velocity architecture. Now, we thought for quite some time that the PC would hold back the consoles because they're not utilizing the SSD the same way that these consoles are. Now, we have confirmation that NVIDIA is using a similar technology in their Ampere GPUs. Now, I would also expect the RDNA 2 cards to be using a similar technique, especially seeing how closely they worked with Microsoft on the Xbox Series X. So like I said earlier, I'm not gonna get caught up in all the hoopla from the release of these cards. I do think they're all fantastic cards. I think that the 3080 and 3070 are a great price for these GPUs, especially when you see the performance gains that you get over the 2080 Ti. Now the key takeaways from this presentation for me was that NVIDIA is threatened by the RDNA 2 cards that will be coming from AMD later this year. Now, first of all, the price tag alone pretty much tells you that the RDNA 2 cards from AMD are going to be competitive because NVIDIA traditionally doesn't launch their flagship cards with such a consumer-friendly price. I also think that they are threatened by the next generation consoles that will be coming out this year. Now, these consoles are scheduled to launch at 499 US dollars. I do think had a role to play with NVIDIA also pricing these GPUs. Now, like I said earlier, they did take a little swipe at the Xbox Series X, talking about the ray tracing capabilities. Now, they didn't really mention the PlayStation 5 at all, but the Series X is threatening at least the 3070. Now, the Xbox Series X is going to be a very powerful GPU. We already know the specifications of that system. We know that the SSD, the velocity architecture, the ray tracing capabilities, it's going to be a fantastic machine. Now, of course, I do expect the 3070 to outperform the Xbox Series X, Nonetheless, for $500, the Xbox Series X is going to be a fantastic deal. And I think NVIDIA is aware of this, and that's why they've priced these GPUs accordingly. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think about all the information today. What are your thoughts on NVIDIA's new line of GPUs? Do you plan on getting a 3090, 3080, or 3070? What are your thoughts on the upcoming second generation of RNA cards from AMD? Do you think they'll be able to challenge NVIDIA? Let me know in the comment section down below. And like I usually say, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.